now that we know the mathematical model that we need to solve for the flat plate flow problem, let's move on to consider the numerical solution strategy used to solve that mathematical model and the errors introduced by that strategy. If I go to the framework of what's inside the CFD black box, we have looked at the mathematical model and we're moving on to consider how that mathematical model is being solved. And that the numerical solution strategy is based on the finite volume method, which is implemented in ANSYS Fluent. And here are the big ideas in the finite volume method. We take the domain and we divide it into multiple control volumes or cells. In our case, the domain is a rectangle and schematically I've shown it being divided here into 12 cells or control volumes. And for instance, that is a cell or a control volume. And we have 12 of these here. And then you say you reduce the problem to determining the velocity and pressure at the cell centers. So since we have 12 cells, we have 12 cell centers. And at each cell center, say a cell center like that, you determine the primary unknowns, U, V, P. And which means that we are going from trying to determine three unknown functions, u of x, y, v of x, y, and p of x, y, to uh, 12 times 3, because we have 12 um, cell centers, and at each cell center we need three values, so 36 values. Solving PDEs to find um, unknown functions is hard, Finding discrete values is not as hard if you have computers. And this idea of determining the primary unknowns only at selected points rather than everywhere in the domain is, a disc, is, you know, is referred to as a discretization and it's a basis for most numerical methods. And then you use interpolation of the cell center values to determine values at other locations within a cell. For instance, if I wanted to determine the U value over here, I would use an interpolation of these four values. So that's another big idea, interpolation. Now that we have reduced the problem to finding the values at the cell centers, how to find the velocity and pressure of the cell centers? You start with your boundary value problem, the mathematical model, and you derive a system of algebraic equations in cell center values. And since we have 36 cell center values determined here, um, we need to, we would need to determine, we need to derive 36 algebraic equations. And you do that uh, by performing a control volume balance for each cell. A little bit more on that um, in, in a minute. And each algebraic equation will relate a cell center value to its neighbor. So for instance, if I write mass conservation for, for this cell involving this cell center value, I will get an algebraic equation relating the velocities at, you know, this cell center to the velocities only at these neighbors. For instance, you know, the other values, uh, like this value would not be involved in that algebraic equation. And we can use a computer to invert those algebraic equations and get the uh, cell center values of UVP. And once we know those 36 values, we can use interpolation and determine in pressure, velocity everywhere. We can um, differentiate the interpolation to find wall shear, and that would all involve post-processing. So here is an overview of the, of the, of the numerical solution strategy then. Um, our starting point is the mathematical model, the boundary value problem, the differential form of governing equations plus boundary conditions. So that's a boundary value problem. And we need to derive algebraic equations relating cell center values, which you can think of as algebraic statements of conservation, mass conservation and F equal to MA. And in the finite volume method, you go over to the integral form of the governing equations plus boundary conditions. If I had the exact solution, it would satisfy both the integral form as well as the differential form. Um, so once you go to the integral form, you apply it to each uh, control volume or cell, and you can derive the algebraic equations. 
And in the process, you introduce an error, which is called a discretization error. And intuitively, you can uh, probably see that you can decrease the discretization error by increasing the number of cells, which is called mesh refinement. Now, an additional complication is that the algebraic equations are nonlinear, so they have to be solved iteratively through linearization. So you derive linearized algebraic equations relating cell center values, and the linearization happens around the guess value. And in the process, you introduce a linearization error, which you minimize through iteration. So you solve iteratively, updating the guess after each solution, and if everything works well, the guess will progressively go to the exact solution of the algebraic equations. And, um, and the way you assess if you have iterative convergence is you look at the imbalances of mass and momentum for each control volume, and then you, you add that all up. So when those imbalances, the mass and momentum imbalances are below a tolerance, um, you will stop the iterations. You'll never get to zero imbalances, which would be the exact solution to the algebraic equations. So that's a quick overview of the big ideas in the finite volume method. For more details, please see my online lectures at, in my EDX course. And this particular link will take you to, uh, to the relevant section, which is called big ideas in CFD. Next, we will take a look at the uh, hand calculations using boundary theory to predict expected results.